I would like to give my heartiest thanks to Honorable Principal Sir and Honorable Teachers. Happy afternoon once again to you all. My name is Pankaj Kumar Singh. I have been a trader from corporate. This is a great opportunity for me that I have got this platform to trade you about few things which are very important things, one of the important things of any school. But let's make it interactive. I won't be like a, a speaking a speech kind of thing. So I want some interaction from you and I want some answers from you all. And I want that each of us, each of you should participate into this. So today the session is going to be on language skills. But before coming to the session, I would like to know from you that what you all are the teachers. So what are the important things, most important thing for becoming a good teacher? We all want to be a very effective teacher in classroom so that the students should be very much attentive to all of us. So what is the most important thing? Please uh, speak. Yes, please. According to me, the most important thing is the way of explanation. Way of explanation, very good. Because we all are knowledgeable about most, but uh, the, some of the students are saying that he is good, he is not. But why? How is this in us? So I think the most important thing is how we explain the topic. Very good, sir. Very good. Anybody else, please? According to me, uh, the interaction is most important between the student and the teacher. Interaction. Otherwise, the class will become very boring. Yes, very good. Yes, please, sir. Body language from the Pardon, sir. Body language. Body language. Okay, that is very good. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Familiar language. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Sir, according to me, there are so many things that a teacher must possess. First of all, they must have a mastery in their subject matters. They must have the understanding of the psychology of the students as well as they must have the communication skills so that they can communicate the difficult topics in a most easiest, easiest way. Very good, sir. Very good. Sir. Yes, sir. You want to say something? Yes, please, sir. Uh, the, communication, uh, the communication skills should be very easy so that uh, the student can uh, learn and understand and uh, he can work on the thing that we are going to generate. One of the issues is comprehensive. Comprehension. Very good, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, anybody else, please? Among the uh, fans? Yes, please, anybody you can try. I want that each of you should focus on this training rather than doing some uh, notebook. Uh, please avoid this work. We focus on this. Okay. You all are correct. I simply ask that what is the most important thing. See, we all are teachers. Teachers means we have good subject knowledge, no doubt about that. We all have got mastery, we all have got this kind of experience in our teaching method and uh, of the classroom as well. So we all have got that. But the difference which makes like, like somebody, uh, teachers like for teaching class 10, we don't need to uh, have PhD. But the subject matters what we are teaching of class 10, class 9, or class 11, or 12. Up to that, we all have studied. But the single thing that makes the difference is called communication skill. How do we communicate? We have got the knowledge. Sir said rightly, sir also said rightly, all of you said rightly, sir also wanted to say the same thing uh, in the other way. Communication skill. Communication means Whatever knowledge we have, for example, I have got something, some equities are there which will support us in our training period. But whatever we have, we have, whatever I am saying, when it goes to you, you interpret it in your own words, you interpret it in your own for, uh, with your own experiences. And you are not taking the same thing the way I am giving you right. So it interprets, it is interpreted by everyone. So similarly, when you speak something, we expect that students are getting the same thing, but this is not correct. In the same class, some students get 90%, some gets 40%, some gets 40 
So interpretation makes the difference. So we should find out the way, some way through which we can have such kind of interpretation that students can give it 100%, they should get exactly the same what we actually want to give. Communications. How we are delivering the knowledge of subject, that is the most important factor. Considering the amount of classes, considering the level of the students, there are different factors that work. Here, after communication skill, the, my topic is here is language skill. Actually, this is the part of communication skill. Why I have chose this job topic? Because this is an English medium school, CBC affiliated school. Most of the students, you might have uh, it means face some kind of uh, some students who have got good knowledge about mathematics, science, SST. They have knowledge. They have knowledge of English also. When you ask the story, they will give you the answer in Hindi. When you ask something, they can explain in science in Hindi. But whenever they write on paper, there are many mistakes. They are unable to express themselves. Do you agree with this? <coughs> Have you realized? How many have you realized? Please raise your hands. They have got the knowledge, but they are unable to express themselves. They are lacking the power of expression. Not only in writing, of course in speaking it is very much obvious whenever you interact with them, then you come to know very immediately that this boy or this girl is not able to speak properly. But in writing of course, what about reasons? In class 10 and class 12 board examinations, they are not physically present there. Whenever they write, whatever they write there, they will get marks according to that. How much knowledge they have got their in brains, it hardly matters. So here my effort, my initiative is to how to develop the community, sorry, language skill of the students. So to develop the language skill of the students, first of all, we all have to be sound in this language skill. We all have to have good language skills. And then, not only we should be equipped with this language skill, but we also need to tell the methods to the students how they can develop themselves. Once you prove their language, your half job is done. When your students will be able to express everything in English, because this is an English medium school, then your job will be very, very easy. And how can you do it? So let's talk about that. So here it is welcome to the world of language. Language means here we are talking about English language. Please proceed. What is one of the most important difference between a human being and an animal? Please, anybody? We have some subconscious part. Language. You might have 
uh, heard some speakers and many of you uh, madams and sir you might have there may be many teachers somebody when he speaks then you like to listen that person not on television among you but sir there might be many people you might be appreciating each other that yes this sir uh, or this ma'am speaking very nice very politely you know her presentation her way of speaking is excellent you like to talk more and there are some people just because of their poor language just because of the way of language selection of the words you do not appreciate them you do not want to talk to them have you ever realized in society in family in colleagues uh, here we are wherever we are working everywhere we are facing such kind of people there are some people whose language is very effective and just because of the language they become the prime minister or the president so language has got this kind of power they may not be very much uh, qualified education wise but since their language is very effective their language is creating effect on their audience and that's why we are holding the key post to the government in the society as well sometimes whenever we have got some problem we have uh, some problems then we all go to some person who are well wishers and you all have we all have some well wishers and we go to them sir this is the problem madam uncle bhaiya this is the problem and they listen it first and then they express their solutions you may accept you might not be accepting but you like the way they speak so we should focus on effective language please proceed.
so that is language skill and it should be conveyed with ideas with clarity and decision discussion not only do you learn to speak well but also listen attentively now let's come to the point let's talk about skills uh, most of you are married i guess might have children as well we all have children at some point of time right now we are very much i am speaking english right now but i speak hindi also as we all speak hindi from rajpur but have you ever thought why do we speak hindi so well so comfortably so effectively and why children also enjoy hindi when you speak in english for a moment they may but later on they will switch over to english so sorry hindi again they enjoy hindi much why why do they enjoy hindi and why are they so well so good in hindi at first we listen some language yes sir you have some ideas you can share please yes sir okay we listen first first of all we listen a child listens unconsciously or consciously for 3 years or 2 years then he or she a baby speaks one letter word two letter words multiple letter words broken sentences a complete sentence like these two as the time goes they keep on speaking but they speak same words here the this is the key they speak the same word what they have listened in their family members no child uh, no family in fact uh, most of the family i would say educated family they don't use abusive languages do they do they please say yes or no don't be angry this one please yes definitely in some families they are using yes they are having children yes that's why most of the families they don't use abusive languages but still you will find some children they use language but they have learned it from somewhere maybe friend maybe uh, neighbors maybe relatives but they have heard somewhere they only they are speaking so listening is the first thing not only do you learn to speak well but also listen attentively this is next point is second skill is writing writing clearly with brevity is another skill that's considered crucial in a professional setting writing writing is the most important thing for teachers and for students as well because when they write the answers you check and then according to their writing you give them you award them marks but you might have interacted with some students whose handwriting is very nice whose way of expression the same question is very nice you teachers also might be expressing your views your answers in same answer will be expressed by different teachers with different kinds of words different kinds of sentences some will be very effective and some will be ordinary we all want to be very effective we all want to be appreciated by the students we all want to be impressive so we have to have very good writing skill here writing is skill many applications you might have interacted with like leave application the name of principal or the name of class teacher and many other applications in my current practice some of them do not know the exact format also some of them know the format but they don't know the formal language for example if i say there is a postman who came my home just imagine if i say i got a letter i got a letter on the other hand if i say I received a letter. Which one is correct? Which one is better? Correct. Both are correct. But which one is better? I received a letter. One is called colloquial word, and second is called formal. May I help you? May I assist you? Which one is correct? Sorry, better. You might have come across uh, some. 
people like uh, you might have also used the income here. What is your name? What's your name? We ask like this. But if you speak like this, my name is Pankaj. Tell me I know your name, please. Which one would you like to listen? Sir, professional. Professional. The formal. Correct. Since we are talking about formal atmosphere, so I shall focus on only formal things. So writing skill is one of the greatest things and for a professional crucial, I shall go in details after this. Reading helps you make sense of vast amounts of data and information. Sometimes, especially English teachers might have interacted with comprehensions and science teacher also. And many are all the teachers. They have got lots of things given in the book. And all of the students, and they all want everything in short. And they have got very less time. So we need to develop the reading skill as well. In a very short span of time, they should have the ability to learn more, to get more, to absorb more from that text. So we need to develop the reading skill. How can we develop? We shall see in the next slide. Yes, please. Developing your linguistic skill will help you become a proficient communicator who knows how to get from point A to B effectively. So to become an effective speaker or a listener or a writer or a reader, we need to have all these four skills to be a very good communicator in the context of teaching profession. We all need to be a very good communicator. So for that we need to have very good four skills. That is LSRW. <coughs> Less so what are the four language skills? Please talk. Anybody can tell me? What are the four language skills? I just didn't know. L -L Listening, writing, speaking. Yes. Yes, very good. LSRW. Order is a little different, but it's fine. Very nice. Please clap for him. Anybody else who can give me the correct order? LSRW. Yes, L for listening, LS, S for speaking, yes, LS, R, R for reading, then writing. Yes, please clap for it. Very good. Please proceed. Please proceed. Listening, speaking, reading, and writing. As I told you, a child listens first. First of all, listens a word, and whatever he listens, he uses the same word. First of all, he speaks ma, ma, mama. mama. Because mother is the closest person to a child. Listening, then speaking. First of all, listens, and then whatever he listens, he speaks. You might have seen. For reading and writing, a person needs to be educated. But in remote areas, in villages, uh, we have uh, come across many people wherein they are not uh, formally educated, but they are very good speakers. So for speaking, we don't need to have a very good qualification. So listening and then speaking, then comes reading and writing. Please do so. Active listening. Now, here, let's come to the listening part. <coughs> Active listening. Listening is fine. Right now, you might be uh, getting the sound of this movement of fans, all right? But are we putting focus on these, these sounds? Some buses or some uh, vehicles might be passing through, and uh, some sound might be coming from there as well. And then, are we focusing on those sounds? Unwanted sounds there. We do not want that. You want to focus on this study session only. You don't want to focus on those unwanted sounds or unwanted uh, voices. Active listening means whenever your listening part and your thinking part, both are running together. That's called active listening. Here, uh, all the teachers are sitting, uh, don't take it otherwise and don't take it offensive. But uh, from the body language, I can say that few of you are not active listeners. You are not listening actively to me. So this happens. This is quite natural. This is quite, uh, what to say? Realistic. Listening is not uh, uh, listening is lot more than simply hearing what someone is saying. If somebody is saying and you are just simply listening, that is not only active listening. 
There is a big difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is when you don't really register the words, instead you nod and smile. Are you listening? Okay. You don't really register the words, instead you nod and smile, while your mind is drifting off to words. Are you everybody listening? Yes. I am not, not want to be offensive, but everybody is not listening. Your mind might be drifting from here and there. Come time, come time, come time, come time, come time, what are the words, copy correction is there, there are many things, right? Might be coming in your mind. You know, what are the evening tasks, we have to go to market and we have to buy this and that. Many things might be running. Your mind is drifting. This is quite natural. It's a piece of the time. That is called, so that's why we are not, you are not focus on this That is called listening. Listening is an activity where you are fully engaged. Not only you are registering their words, but also getting curious to learn more. When you are a what yes, what new, what new. I, I, in the beginning itself, I turned more in that this is going to be a tiring moment for you. Because after taking eight periods, sitting with full concentration is very, very difficult. But we have to. So listening is that active listening. We must. This will not come in one day. Like whenever you are in a problem, for example, or you need, you are in the need of some money, and somebody has told you, your friend, might be some bank manager, is telling you that yes, I will give you uh, today some loan, some money, and whenever whatever terms and conditions, it is many. You are focusing on that. Okay. Term condition one. 2, 3, 4, 100% concentration is there. Am I right? While watching movies, Bahubali, you are 100% focused. What will happen next? What will happen next? Why did the pup kill Bahubali? We are focusing 100%. Our mind is not drifting anywhere. But while taking sessions, while Whenever you are lecturing also, whenever you are delivering, delivering your classes in a classroom before the student, you are 100% focused on your subject matter. But when you are sitting silently, then it is quite natural that your mind will be drifting here and there. But we have to bring, we have to bring that, and then we have to put it together for active listening. So active listening will give you 100% result, fruitful it is, because otherwise it will be the wastage of time of yours, and this stage of effort also. So we must have for the habit of active listening. Please proceed. Next on the point speaking. If there is one communication skill everyone needs but many fear, it's speaking effectively. The fear is in terms of speaking in front of an audience. Well, uh, other respected people here want to say that you might have interacted today. I went to, to some classes and I found some uh, students who were, what to say, little troublesome kind of children. They will speak this, they will take this kind of sound, they will do that kind of sound. But when you call them, when you make them stand here before the class, they will be silent. They will have no word to speak. You all are teachers, you might be delivering very good speeches and very good, uh, you are very much comfortable with the stage. But most of the people are not like that. Whenever they get an opportunity to speak something, there they do not deliver. There you go. That is the biggest problem. So whenever, if you want to be a very good communicator, if people respect, if people know those people who are good communicators. Sandeep Maheswari, you might have heard about him? Yes. He is a very good communicator. Swami Vivekananda, very good communicator. Our Prime Minister, Honorable Mr. Modi, very good communicator. So we listen to them attentively, not because he is the Prime Minister, because he is a very, we enjoy their speeches, we enjoy their words. So speaking is an art and it does not come in a day, but gradually we have to practice over this. So the fear is in terms of speaking in front of an audience, presentations, meetings and speeches. It may even be communicating with an interviewer if you are applied for a job, speaking well helps you in many areas of life. For example, whenever we are going for a job, teacher job, you might have come here someday, and then whenever you are interacting with uh, the uh, seniors or uh, 
the heads of the institutions, then most of us normally, naturally, become little nervous. Whatever we are unable to deliver our hundred percent, either we become overconfident or we become less. We are not normal, right? So very unlikely appearance it happens. Talking to friends, co-workers, or clients requires some skill, attention, and concentration. So speaking skill, we must try to acquire, and we must deliver. We must help the students also to acquire this skill. It's a great skill. And if you want to get success, if we all want to get success, then we must be a very good speaker. But before a very good speaker, we must be a very good listener. Then only we can be a very good speaker. So we must try to uh, obtain this kind of skill. Excuse me. Reading. Since we have got very less time, less time so I am going a little fast. Reading well. And please listen it uh, very carefully because at the end of the session I shall have some questions. I will not have in the printed form which I will start, but uh, I shall ask you a few questions. So listen actively. When you read, you take your time. Sir, we can have some awards also. Uh, if, if you are comfortable with, we can register the name. Next week. Yes, and uh, those who are in so that uh, we can know that how much I, I was successful and how much they are successful. Reading well. When you read, you take your time to understand what the author is trying to convey with their words. Whether it's a novel, online article, or even a business report, it's important to take your time with it and make sense of the original intent. Reading well and deeply requires complete attention but also efficiency so you don't end up going over the same sentence multiple times. What happens? And whenever, let me clear this, today I went to class 9A. I was given a class here. And there, for the whole period, I was focusing on only one thing, the difference between language and literature. The book, what they have got is literature. That is not a language. In day-to-day -day life, most of the times we use language. However, sometimes we use literature as well. Unconsciously we use, but we use. And students must know what is the difference between these two. Then only their approach will be changing. Then they will be uh, taking the literature in the other way. Whatever the contents are there, it does not have the same sense what they have, what they look like. So, reading this means sometimes, on many occasions, you might have seen that we are reading the same text three times, four times, five times. It consumes our time, it takes our effort, but if we can read, if we can learn, we can take out the essence of that uh, sentence, uh, in just uh, in just in one go or or twice when we read, then it would be better. It will save our time, it will save our energy. Or we all want, but on many occasions it does not happen. We have to read the same text many times. The students have to also do the same thing. Especially these teachers, uh, they get comprehension in their examinations. On many occasions you might have uh, seen that many students do not understand the question of mathematics or science. They will ask you during the elimination, Sir, what is the meaning of it? Sir, let's go to the Have you got this kind of experience? During elimination, during examination, they ask from the teachers. Just because of poor reading skill. For the whole year, they have studied this. They have solved mathematics, they have interacted with those things. But still, they are unable to understand those questions. This is because of poor reading skill. So we must enhance this, and this can be enhanced only by one way that reading it time and again, reading it again, more, more, more and more. We need to be familiarized with the words this place. What are the characteristics of deep reading? Here we are, I was talking about. You are able to understand what the author wants to convey the first time. Author means anybody who is writing, like your examiners, like your students are writing something in your answer sheet. So it means he is the author. That is what I mean here. You manage your time well without spending hours with the text that you want to explain that we don't want to invest a huge amount of time to learn a simple text. We want to consume very less amount of time for simple text. We want to learn it very quickly. We want to save our time. You can draw conclusions, write summaries and analyze the content without a problem. You make notes and memos, so it's easier to identify parts of a text. So, these are very simple things and common things. Familiar things I would say, 
for reading skill. So we all want that. For that, we need to develop uh, our reading skill. Once I was working in Pune with a career forum, you might have heard about that, and Times and Delhi. That is, uh, they are the institutions which uh, prepare students for MBA examinations, CAT examinations. And they focus on two things for the reading skill because they have got long combinations and they have got 100 marks per passage, I mean, sorry, an English term paper. There, for improvement of this reading skill, they used to suggest them to read the novels. Any novel, any favorite novel, read out. And they have got the cards, that they were pocket cards. Uh, some words were given there, their meanings were explained there and they have to carry one card at a time in their pockets for a week. Seven words were there and every day. They do not need to learn them. Simply like they are sitting, uh, they are waiting for some doctor or they are sitting idly. They have to just read out. Five or six times or ten times just reading it out. The word will be memorized. And they have to use it. If, you, if they do not use it, they will lose it. Because words are something which you have to use it. If, you, if the words are new, then you have to use it. Otherwise, it will be lost. You cannot use them. You shall forget the meaning. Next is writing. The last part of this. Uh, proficient writing. All of us want to write something or write in a manner in which people should appreciate. People should say that yes, this is a very good writing. What an impressive writing. I'm not talking about handwriting here. Handwriting is a little different thing. Here we are talking about the word selection, the sentence framing, the way we are framing the sentences. Linguistic skills are incomplete without proficient writing abilities. Writing well means you are able to compactly present your ideas. You don't have to write long complex sentences stuck with heavy vocabulary to write well. What you need to is the ability to convey your thoughts in short, crisp sentences writing well will help you with business communication or if you are in a creative field that involves copywriting, blogs and social media posts. It may stay this in a very simple way. Here uh, I want to ask from you people or I want to know from you people that do you prefer reading small sentences or long sentences? Please tell me loudly. How many of you mixed answers are there? How many of you like long sentences? How many of you like small sentences? Please raise your hands. Long sentences. How many of you like sentences with passive voice? The small sentence with complete memory. How many of you like the sentences which are stuck with or which are packed with unfamiliar words? If I speak unfamiliar words, will you be able to uh, listen for a long time? It was very old fashioned that if a person is using tough words, Difficult words, unfamiliar words, the people used to say, Hari Vaal, kya bolta hai? Kitna achha speaker hai, bada vikwaan hai. Kya bola hai? Yeh na samaj hai. Lekin achha hai. What is the use of that speaking? What is the use of that kind of writing? That is a myth. That is not truth. That if somebody uses unfamiliar words, then people will be impressed. People will not be impressed. There may be a political leader who is uneducated, but when he goes to village, he speaks with their own language. He does not speak, he might be know English, but when he goes to uh, some Bhojpuri area, he will speak in Bhojpuri. Our Prime Minister, when he goes to Mithila, he speaks in Pathan. At least one sentence he speaks. When he goes to Bhojpuri area, he starts with a Bhojpuri sentence. That is 
the power of communication. So when you want to connect yourself, communication has the only one aim, that is connecting, connecting the people, connecting with the audience, connecting with the readers. And for that we must have the ability, have the habit of using familiar words, not unfamiliar words. However, it should be professional, like I got a letter, I received a letter. Both are easy words, but one is colloquial word, second is formal words. No, not formal words, but it should be familiar. If you want to connect with, with your audience, as a teacher, our audience is most of the times our students. So familiar words, small sentences. Ram is going to Patna, full stop. He is going to meet friend, full stop. He will do some shopping, full stop. Now, look at the second sentence. Ram is going to Patna to meet his friend to, and to do some shopping. It will take lots of time to understand the second sentence. Because this, is, this has got, this is a long sentence. A sentence, a child has to see many kinds of verbs there. Going, meeting, shopping. And when you make small sentences, it is easier to understand. If sir tells you to make a lesson plan of one month in a day, it will be very difficult. But when it is divided day wise or week wise, it is easier for us. The work is also divided, syllabus is also divided. So it's a human uh, tendency, natural uh, characteristic of human being that we learn simple things. We understand easier things. We, we expect something easier. So as a speaker or as a writer, if we if we use difficult words or long sentences, then our readers or the audience will not connect with us. They will go away from us. They may not be saying before you, but mentally they will be away from you. They won't be able to listen you second time or maybe third time. They won't appreciate. So Whenever we are using the words, we of course use, should use familiar words and uh, of course we should use small sentences and uh, on the top of that we should have very formal words and the formal context. This is Some aspects of professional writing, how can you become a very good writer? You know how to structure your writing to generate interest. So you are like a story, we like, we love stories. Because it creates some interest. You might be liking, uh, so I guess I have only five minutes, two or three minutes. Two or three minutes, I guess. So in series, TV series, they stop the episode at a place where you'll be, you know, you will be thinking that up kya hoga, up kya hoga. And the next day they resume from it. So that should generate this interest. You can tell a story with your boss to make your communication all the more interesting. So you should add stories when you are delivering something. You are able to put your thoughts into words. You can summarize long reports and text for easy understanding. So for a very good writer, we need to have all these things in our practice. Since we have got very less time, so I would not be able to Please what are the advantages of building language skills? Now let's come to the final part of this. Yes, please. Make an impact at work. This is our workplace. Here we can make an impact, a great impact. We all want to stand first. Prince Professor should give award, best teacher award to this person. Everybody wants to be the best. So these skills will definitely make a great impact at the workplace. Become a storyteller. Storyteller in classes, you might, we all might be speaking something about your own stories related to your life or some fictional stories, whatever it is. But we all are very good. We all have to be a very good storyteller. Then only we can be a very good communicator. We need to stand out. Yes, of course. We don't want to be in a crowd. We all want that the principal sir wants to take. Acha, is kaam ke liye ye better hai. Who should be the first? Uh, uh, yes, who should get the first prize? Everybody wants. Nobody will speak, however, but everybody wants. Sir, mera naam le. So, 
everybody wants to stand out. This is a natural characteristic of a human being, and these four skills will definitely make it out. Please proceed. Present ideas with precision. Sometimes uh, uh, we went whatever ideas we have, normally we try to speak with many words, long sentences, it takes use lots of time. Everybody wants to okay, think as a true, short and of care. Short and of Right now I also am watching uh, my watch time to read because I don't want to consume a lot of time. And this was a tough and the I have tough So I must catch it. Please listen. Understand both verbal and non-verbal communication. Uh, we shall discuss this some other day. Verbal and non-verbal. Verbal means somewhere uh, we, where we are using words, whether it is speaking or writing. Non-verbal means sometimes with the body language also. Like when you stand like this, when you stand like that. So everything is saying something. Body language is saying something. Our own contact is also very important. I stop, I can do things. So when somebody is happy or somebody is upset, you can come to know their eyes, to their uh, faces. They have push, they have to do something. They have to do something. So, not the communication. When we use uh, these things, so this is all about the session. However, I tried myself to summarize it in brief. We needed some more time. There were many more things like communication. I could not describe it well but because of the uh, limitations of time. I could not go further. However, I expect that you might have got some advantages in this brief session. I'm not satisfied with myself actually because I needed some more time. But anyways, uh, I think it might have helped you in some ways. Well, if you have some question, you can come out, please. If you have any query, you can ask them. Or teachers, anybody? If you have any query? You are so effective that you don't have questions to ask. Pardon, sir? You are so effective that you don't have questions to ask. Thank you. Anyways, I think time is uh, the other factor. Yes, that is the biggest factor. I can understand from your non-verbal communication. <laughs> Anyways, so let me put some questions and I shall take one more minute more. Uh, what are the, uh, what should be the listening skill? What kind of listening skill we should have? Anybody can explain? Listening skill, what do we mean by listening skill? Anybody briefly? I told you sir, you also ask questions in your class. From the students after the session. When your class is over, you ask questions in your class? No, you can answer. Can I hold it? Regular student of the areas. I think listening skills means carefully engaging in the communications process and deriving the meanings from the words that we are receiving from the senders. Excellent. What to say? Excellent. Please clap for it. And what about a speaking skill? Anybody? Anybody else? Ma'am, after the person, please, anybody? Sir? Sir? Sir, grammar, the punctuation marks and all that. 
express for writing actually? No, reading also. We have to take the gaps for the comma. Yeah, the things understood. Uh, from that, the meanings will be changed if the commas and the full stops are not used in a proper manner. Yes, the simple thing which we should do is we have to read more text. More, more, more and more. And varieties of text. Fictions, non-fictions, biographies, autobiographies. When you read more, you will be familiar with many words. Like when we meet many people, then we can understand of people, understand the society. Similarly. And what about writing skill? The last one. How can we develop our writing skill? Here skill means where we can be effective. Yes, writing skill. Anybody? Actually, sir, from my point of view, writing still means expressing more message by using minimum words. Yes, that is one yes. of the things. Very good. Please clap for him. <laughs> so, uh, using minimum word, minimum words and speaking means uh, giving more messages. But there are many more things about writing skill. Very, means the selection of words, of course, sentences, the sentence framing, and. Uh, the handwriting is also one of the parts of that that makes it effective. And uh, the last but not the least is the writing skill. You have to write more, more and more. And get it checked by someone who is expert of this. When flaws will come, mistakes will come out, then you will be able to improve. Not you, I am saying you, I want me to say exactly you, game is students. So this way, the way how can we develop these four skills and four skills means we are developing the language skills. All together we can develop the communication skill. This will be a uh, very good helping hand for very effective classroom uh, experience and very effective for the students. I hope uh, we all will be trying our best to deliver all these things in the future course of our classroom actions. Anyways, thank you very much for your precious time. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.